so we also need to be able to see a message here that says you have no messages if there are no messages so let's come back here and we can do that by just checking if this has messages at all so i'll get that and i will say what will i say here oops go if is array yes data duplicate that open the bracket push that in and then else echo you have no messages okay let's see if we haven't broken anything bam nothing okay so let's craft a query to suit what we want here we want to see the latest message and not this one so in order to do this to demonstrate what we can do how to do this particular thing let me go to my uh, localhost and I will need to open two of these so I'll right click on messages and open the new tab so that we can uh, have somewhere to compare mm -hmm. so obviously if I come here and go to the SQL tab I can run some queries here so let me zoom this in if it's possible so here we have select all from messages now if we remove where close here and just say select all from messages and hit go as expected you see that it returns all the messages from id 3 to 9 okay good but let's click edit in line here so that we can edit it right there so now if i tell it to group so i'll say group by message id okay gives me a suggestion there good and i hit go you see now that i get two only okay uh -huh. but as usual i get the three and the eight those are the first two if we compare here you see that eight is the first of this thread three is the first of that thread and that's not what we want so how do we fix this so we can use a join instead now a join is used to join two queries together usually to join two tables together now we don't have two tables here this is just the messages table but you can still use a join on the same exact table so let me ex explain here for a second i'll say edit in line let's see how an, a, an ordinary join would look like so i'll say select all from messages okay now i'll put this query inside brackets like so and then outside i will put another one and say select all from users and then i'll say join so i'm saying select all from users join the select all from messages so what i'm doing here is i'm telling it to get everything from users and get everything from messages and create one table in the result so if i go say go i get this uh, awesome error here so let's read the error it says every derived table must have its own alias hmm. so what is this thing called alias anyway so an alias is like a nickname so it's saying each table should have a nickname so where i say select all from users here i should make i should put a nickname right next to it so i can put a nickname like table one like that and also this one i should call this one table two like that so the alias should be anything 
can be anything, sorry. It's just a matter of text. But to simplify things, we don't need to be typing the whole table. We can just say T1 and then this one is T2, like that. Because uh, really, it doesn't matter the aliases as long as they are there. So let me quick go. And this time it doesn't complain because we've added the aliases there. And look what we have here. So the table looks much bigger because it has joined. If you notice here, there's an ID, user ID, first name. This is the users table because we say it's selector from users, but join selector from messages. Yes. So if we move a bit further here, you see that there's another ID here. And then there's a message ID, sender, receiver. So this is the messages table. So both have been joined, but they haven't been joined so well because you see there are repeats here. It's trying to attempt to make the table make sense somehow. So it's repeating some of the records just so it, uh, each record here on this table can have a counterpart on the other side. But we can be more specific to tell it where to join these two. So for example, I can tell it uh, join only where the IDs match, like in the users table where there's ID one, join the same where there's ID one here. But obviously there's no ID one in messages, it's just three, five, six, and so on. And then in users table, it ends at five. So let's see how we can do that. So let me go to edit inline and say select all from T1, select uh, T2. So this is all fine. But then when we say join, we can tell it where to join at the end. It's like a where clause, but you say on. So it's like join on. This is kind of like the where clause, where. Mm -hmm. So I want to join where ID is equal to ID because these are the ID columns. I want the ID columns to match. So let's click go. Again, another error. So let's see what the error says. It says column ID in on close, in the on close there, is ambiguous. Okay, so what does ambiguous mean? It means it's vague. It's like um, it doesn't know which ID you are talking about because there are two IDs. There's two tables here. So which ID are you talking about exactly from which table? So I need to say something like T2 or T1.ID should be equal to T2.ID. So now at least it knows that where T1ID is equal to T2ID, that's where you join. So go. And as you can see, we have uh, better results now. So we only have those rows where the IDs are matching. There's three and there's five. So if I scroll this way, you see that also here there's ID 3 and ID 5. And those two are working pretty well. So this is how you do a join. So you're asking yourself, I'm sure, what has this got to do with our messages? Okay, relax a little bit. Now, the thing is, before we move on, as you can see here, we are returning rows from both uh, from both tables. Now there are sometimes you just want to join these and return very specific rows that you want here or columns I mean. So let me edit this in line and come here. So if you want to get specific columns I can tell it that I want a column from t1.id comma and I want one from t2 dot uh, dot message id wait t2 is the messages one yes yes so let's uh go there and as you can see this is what we get we get the message id from t2 the id from t1 so you can be very specific but in this case i just want it to get t1 dot star like so my mouse is down again so what that means is that I want to get all columns from table one and nothing from table two, which is messages. Or I can say T2 star like that. Then I'll get all the columns from messages. So let me go. 
And as you can see, I get all the columns from messages. Okay, so from this, we have kind of a skeleton of what we want to do. Now, let me create, now that you understand what joins are like, okay? So let's create our query here. I think uh, that would take a little bit of time. So let's do that in the next video. This was just an introduction to joins.